Hello, my name is Vivek Kumar. I am presenting my research proposal, which is mechanism based development of dual cysteine proteases, SARS CoV 2 main protease, and human preferential inhibitors using active site peptidome matrix. So, human cathepsin and orange cattle and SARS CoV 2 main protease, these are the cysteine proteases involved in endosomal viral entry and the viral replication of SARS CoV 2 respectively. So the efficacy of current FDA approved drug Nirmatrelvir, uh, which is a reversible covalent inhibitor of main proteas, is reduced with the arrival of new mutations. With further mutation expected to decrease it, uh, diminish its potency even more. It is inactive against H cattle, and uh, it is ineffective without the support of PGP inhibitor ribonavir, which is the second active component of Paxlovid, which is given to increase the plasma life of Nirmatrelvir. So, main protease is highly specific in recognizing uh, uh, leucine, leucine glutamine scaffold with glutamine or its mimic is critical at the P1 site for the activity of main protease. Whereas, uh, H cattle has the preference for P2 amino acid which has to be hydrophobic such as phenylalanine or leucine but has broader preference for P1 amino acid. Uh, and work best if P2 is phenylalanine and P1 is arginine. And our lab showed that uh, on using appropriate leucine glutamine peptidome mimetics, dual cysteine proteases inhibitors can be developed that can accommodate in the active sites of both cysteine proteases. This is one of the inhibitor that targets both the cysteine proteases. It contains 2 pyridonyl alanine as P1 and leucine as P2, and cisic amide is replaced with non hydrolyzable aldehyde which is positioned precisely for the cysteine thiolate attack and forms uh, coherent uh, uh, hemithioacetal. Our overall aim in this proposal to use this uh, leucine glutamine peptidomimetics and uh, attach the uh, mild uh, electrophilic covalent warhead. So, there are several advantages of targeting both the uh, cysteine proteases using single inhibitors. They will produce synergy as well as uh, uh, or they will mo most likely to avoid drug resistance as host protease H cattle will not undergo mutations. And recent literature suggests that uh, uh, this dual inhibitors will have higher in vivo efficiency even though if they show moderate potency against single uh, protease and they will have simplified pharmacokinetics. These are the possible uh, proposed mechanism of actions for the warheads described in this proposal. First is activated amino pyridines. Pyridine system is activated by incorporating electron withdrawing substituent at the fifth carbon, such that uh, now pyridine has become uh, amenable for cysteine thiolate attack and forms the uh, covalent attack with active site cysteine. Second is alpha beta unsaturated ester. So, Alpha beta unsaturated carbonyls are present in uh, uh, a large number of FDA approved drugs that target cysteine proteases, and they are proved to be well known uh, Michael acceptor for cysteine proteases, where uh, cysteine thiolate attacks the beta carbon and forms irreversible thioether adduct. Third is acylated uh, delta lactose. So these are the products of delta lactose when they internalize in cells uses the activity of host cell stress to convert them into the active delta lactone based drugs and our lab showed that when this uh, delta lactone based inhibitors bind to their target cysteine protease uh, they undergo cysteine catalyzed ring opening of delta lactose to form uh, reversible hemithioacetal. Fourth is uh, delta lactone oxymethyl ketones. So this is alkylated uh, version of pro drug pro delta lactose where uh, uh, LMK is built here by using the H cattle recognize, uh, uh, recognizable scaffold such that when this inhibitor binds to the H cattle active site, active site cysteine, uh, when, when it attacks the, uh, the cisyl carbon, it forms the reversible hemithioketone and upon further rearrangement, it forms uh, irreversible thioether adduct with H cattle and uh, when it happens the active delta lactone based drug which is improved active drug will get released in the cell. There are three aims in this proposal. M1 is to functionalize the leucine glutamine peptidomimetics with mild electrophilic covalent warheads which involves amino uh, activated pyridines and alpha beta unsaturated ester, acylated delta lactone through drugs and delta lactone oxymethyl ketones.
second aim in, uh, in this proposal is to uh, understand the mechanism of inhibitions using comprehensive kinetic assays so we will do the time dependent uh, fluorescent assays using the substrate that get uh, fluorescently activated using the activity of cysteine proteases from the time course data we will calculate the initial uh, velocities or the steady state velocities and we will employ this velocities in, into the equations of competitive inhibitions and we will determine all the uh, variables of inhibition such as inhibition constants or rate of inactivation etc. Third aim in this proposal is to identify all the off-target cysteine proteases as well as their extent of inhibition using activity based protein profiling. For that we will use the alkyne labeled irreversible inhibitors uh, to modify all our uh, target proteases in cell such that this labeled pro uh, uh, inactivated proteases can be labeled with uh, azide containing fluorophore such as Cy7 azide and can be visualized into the uh, in gel fluorescent assays. Coming to M1, the first part of my M1 is to functionalize our peptidome matrix with irreversible warheads which includes uh, uh, alpha beta unsaturated esters and activated pyridines. So both warheads require a common synthetic roots that involves the synthesis of aldehyde and aldehydes can be synthesized from the peptides containing uh, venerib amide at the C terminal and these peptides will be synthesized using carboxylic acid amine uh, coupling chemistry using HATU as a coupling reagent. And aldehydes, when uh, it is treated with the appropriate phosphonate esters <coughs> using uh, horner emers chemistry, it will be converted into unsaturated esters. Similarly, aldehydes, when uh, aldehydes will be converted into secondary amine products by using uh, reductive amination with, uh, by using appropriate amino pyridines. P1 will be uh, glutamine uh, mimic amino acids, just two pyridonyl alanine and oxazolyl alanine. P2 will be leucine or leucine mimic cyclopropyl alanine. P3 will be N-methyl piperidine or uh, 4 methoxy indole. So we have so far we have succeeded in developing two aldehyde based uh, dual inhibitors which has uh, leucine as P2 and uh, uh, glutamine mimic 2 pyridonyl alanine or oxazolyl alanine and uh, this uh, inhibitor uh, displayed uh, potent antiviral activity in B-ROA6 cells in the presence of PGP inhibitor. And we have one uh, potent irreversible inhibitor for H cattle uh, that displayed potent uh, antiviral activity against both B-ROA6 cells as well as the human uh, A549 cells. But it is inactive against main protease. Now second part of my M1 is to convert uh, the aldehydes into the uh, dental actual based drugs. So for that, uh, uh, the synthetic process uh, will be same as the aldehydes. The only difference here is the choice of uh, amino acid. So uh, choice of P1 amino acid. Here, uh, it has the uh, uh, hydroxyl group at the ortho carbon uh, in the P1 side chain, such that when we make a peptidyl aldehydes, which has free hydroxyl group at ortho carbon, the spontaneous cyclization will lead to the formation of uh, stable and six member delta lactose and we will acylate this anomeric hydroxyl using three different acyl groups such as ethyl isopropyl and pivaloyl groups to make uh, acylated products. So our lab had showed that uh, the carboxy stress uh, can uh, hydrolyze this uh, uh, acylated lactose into the active drugs. So therefore we will uh, use LCMS to uh, characterize this deacylation reaction using carboxy stress. So, dental lactose will be converted to uh, LMKs by nucleophilic substitution reaction by treating it with uh, appropriate uh, chloromethyl ketones of appropriate uh, H cattle recognition, uh, chloromethyl ketones containing H cattle recognition uh, peptides such that uh, they will get, uh, such that the LMKs will get uh, cleaved by using the activity of H cattle and we will use the LCMS to uh, characterize this uh, hydrolysis reaction by H cattle. Now we have two uh, delta lactal based drugs uh, which contains ortho hydroxyl tyrosine at P, uh, P1 and leucine at P2 and this VK18 uh, displayed potent antiviral activity in, pre uh, in presence of uh, PGP inhibitor and this is a uh, highly potent uh, H cattle inhibitor uh, which has delta lactal uh, warhead and this is inactive against M-Pro as it doesn't have the 
leucine glutamine scaffold you can see it is not uh, it doesn't display any antiviral activity in human a549 cells but upon acylating this uh, hydroxyl group with pivanoyl group there is a drastic increase in the antiviral activity which is uh, ec50 156 nanomolar the, the first part of my aim to is to uh, uh, do the comprehensive kinetic assays for reversible inhibitions so so far we know that delta lactose and aldehyde based inhibitions are reversible therefore uh, and uh, they follow two step uh, uh, kinetic mechanism of reversible inhibitions where inhibitor compete with the substrate for active site and forms the non covalent uh, complex followed by formation of uh, covalent hemithioacetal complex from the time course data uh, the initial velocities uh, can be calculated which can be employed uh, in this equation of competitive inhibition and through that we can determine the inhibition constant which is the ratio of k2 by k1 similarly the other parameters like k3 and k4 which uh, involves the steady state velocities can be determined using uh, this steady state velocities of time course data now second part of my aim two is to understand the time dependent behavior of irreversible inhibitions so for irreversible in, uh, inhibitions we observe the uh, saturation of uh, steady state velocities with time it happens because uh, the concentration of active site uh, decreases as they get covalently modified with time so and this saturation times depends entirely upon the reactivity of the uh, warhead or electrophilicity of the warhead the greater the electrophilicity the faster the saturation will be there and uh, uh, and also the rate of inactivation will be higher so from the uh, time course data the these fluorescent curves can be fitted into this first order ex exponential equation and through that we can determine the uh, pseudo first order uh, rate constant for all the for different inhibitor concentration and when we plot uh, k observed versus uh, inhibitor concentration we can determine the rate of inactivation versus the inactivation constant which is k2 by k1 and this uh, ratio of k inact versus, uh, by ki is the uh, bimolecular rate constant uh, that determines the uh, overall uh, potency of irreversible inhibition now aim 3 of my proposal is to uh, identify all the off target cysteine proteases as well as their extent of inhibition using activity based protein profiling for that we will use the alkyne uh, labeled irreversible inhibitor and uh, we will treat vero e6 cells with this irreversible inhibitors all the target proteases including h catalyl and main protease will get uh, covalently modified then after that we will lyse the cell and the cell lysers will be treated with uh, uh, azide containing uh, fluorophores psi7 azide and using uh, copper mediated click reaction all the uh, inactivated uh, proteases will be labeled with uh, this fluorophore psi7 and this labeled proteases will be subjected for trypsin digestion and will be analyzed uh, uh, and the fragments will be analyzed using mass spectrometry similarly uh, this label fluorescently labeled proteases will be also visualized using in their fluorescent assays such as sds page we will increase the concentration of inhibitors to verify whether the labeling pattern is in enhanced or not and we will also do the competition experiment with unlabeled inhibitors that the non alkyl based inhibitors to check whether they are uh, suppressing the labeling here or not so finally i thank dr mink uh, uh, who provided me to work in this wonderful project i uh, thank all my lab members especially dr bala jiyun and andri who were part of my projects i thank my collaborators uh, uh, dr sen at utmb health galveston for antiviral assays and dr audrey lam uh, at ut san antonio for x-ray crystallography i thank uh, agri life and uh, nih for funding